Hello. We have prepared this video to go over some of the most frequently asked questions after transplant with you. But first, congratulations in getting your new transplant. We know this could be an overwhelming time for you and that you may have many questions. That is why we made this animation to answer some of your frequently asked questions. But please don't hesitate to make us aware of any questions or concerns you might have. And without further ado, let's start. One of the most frequently asked questions is, well, how come I have so many medications? Let me explain. Your immune system protects you by fighting infections and foreign bodies. Now it's this same immune system that will recognize your transplanted organ as a foreign body and will fight against it. That's where anti-rejection medications come into play. They are used to suppress your immune system and prevent your body from rejecting your newly transplanted organ. You will always need to take your anti-rejection medications because they will prevent the rejection of your transplant organ and maintain the health of your transplant for as long as possible. Some common medications after transplant include your anti-rejection medications, antivirus medications, and an antibiotic. But from this extensive list, each patient gets their individualized combination based on their specific needs. And just like any other medications, there are many interactions with anti-rejection medications. That is why it's very important for you to check with your pharmacist before you start any new medications. Another frequently asked question is, do I have to take my medication on time? The short answer is yes. Anti-rejection medications work best when taken regularly and on time. So you need to make sure to take your medication on time as it ensures appropriate amount of anti-rejection medication is maintained in your body at all times. This also allows your pharmacist to accurately adjust your dose if needed. Some tips to help you take your medication properly include simply setting an alarm on your phone, following your medication calendar you are provided on discharge, and using blister packs or pill organizers available at community pharmacies. Now on to the next question. Can I use cannabis products? The answer is potentially, but not to smoking. This is because a smoking cannabis increases the risk of fungal lung infections in transplanted patients. There is also a drug interaction between cannabis and tacrolimus. If you decide to use edibles, you should use the same amount daily and let us know so we adjust your tacrolimus dose accordingly. Next question we are frequently asked is about vaccines. You should receive your flu shot every year but not the intranasal kind because it's a live vaccine. So generally all vaccines are okay as long as they are not the live kind. So check with your doctor or pharmacist to make sure it is not a live vaccine you're receiving. Some of the examples of vaccines you can get after transplant include Shingrix, pneumonia, and hepatitis B vaccines. Shingrix and Prevnar are available at a cost, while Pneumovax is covered in British Columbia. And finally, 
What about family planning post transplant? Female transplant patients of childbearing age must use a form of birth control. And if you are planning a family, consult with your transplant team to change your medication regimen before you get pregnant. This is because some anti-rejection medications should not be used during pregnancy. Male patients, on the other hand, can father children without changes to their medication regimen. Now let's go over some good practices to follow post-transplant. Take your anti-rejection medications on time all the time so that their levels remain steady, allowing your pharmacist to adjust your dose accurately. Make sure to store your medication in a cool, dry place away from the reach of children and pets. Wash your hands before and after handling your medication. Anyone coming in contact with your medications should also wash their hands. This is to avoid contaminating your medications or other surfaces. Don't start or stop any over-the-counter or herbal medications without consulting the transplant team. This is because of the potential interactions you might not be aware of. Keep an extra two weeks of anti-rejection medications on hand at all times. Take your anti-rejection medication with food for better tolerance as some of these medications could be hard on the stomach. Let us know if you are traveling across time zones so we can adjust the timing of your medications accordingly. And finally, please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you for watching this video. Your transplant pharmacy team.